ancient and medieval weapons were cruel, strong, and well-made. They were, however, perfectly and easily manufactured. Even the smallest component of the war weapon required excellent critical thinking, sound analytics, and ingenuity. The creation of the weaponry involved extensive planning to achieve success in the conflict. Every empire or civilization had a distinctive weapon design and shape. So without wasting time, let's quickly look at the top 10 incredible ancient weapons ever used. Number 10. Shuriken Shuriken was a lethal weapon that was small in size and came from Japan in 1956. It was also known as Ninja Stars or Throwing Stars, and it served as a hidden dagger. It had a star-like shape with a rounded middle and pointed edges. The edges were crafted with sharp points that produced cuts on the victim's body. In some cases, the edges were often covered in poison and animal feces to infect the opponent's body through the cuts. The ability to use this little weapon was taught as a martial art and practiced for more than 100 years throughout the ninja era. Samurai and Aesiguru warriors also used it. Number 9. Kopesh One of the earliest all-metal weapons of war in human history is the Kopesh. Around 2500 BC, the earliest samples were produced in Mesopotamia. The style was immediately adopted by Egypt, where it rose to prominence as the warrior class preferred blade and possibly the first sword ever made. The Kopesh is an odd-looking curving weapon with a pointed axe-like edge and a substantial quantity of metal behind it, making it just as effective at smashing through armor as it was at slicing. Because of its sharpened tip, it may also be used as a stabbing tool. The Kopesh was one of the most sophisticated weapons of its day, yet it cost a fortune to produce, because only air aristocracy and professional warriors could buy one. It swiftly became a representation of Egypt's ruling class. Number 8. Ketar The Ketar, often referred to as the Bundy Dagger, or a Push Dagger, had its origins in southern India. Given that it was a single-shot assassination weapon, it was among the most hazardous. The weapon was the one that Indian martial arts practitioners used the most. Most of the Tamil infantry groups known as Kalapadai employed it. It had an H-shaped grip and the appearance of a sharp knife. The middle and index fingers were used to grasp the handle. The blades, however, came in a variety of shapes, some straight and some bent. The extremely sharp edge was typically used to stab the opponent. Additionally, it can penetrate enemy shield walls and armor. Because they regarded it as a sacred weapon, it was used to worship during various rites and rituals. Number 7. Shotel Around 980 BC, the shotel, also known as the sickle sword, was invented in ancient Ethiopia. It was about 100 and 1 centimeters long. It was one of the most widely used weapons since it had a vicious appearance and could pierce opponents with just a light touch. Its design made it difficult for others to block it with a shield or another sword. Both mounted and foot soldiers employed it because they could quickly slash at their adversary's kidneys and lungs with sharp curved blades. However, because of its length and design, it was incredibly challenging to use. Additionally, just removing the sword from its scabbards would take some time and pose a risk of injury to the swordsmen. Number 6. Wave-bladed sword Wave-bladed German-born swords were originally known as swords with flame-like blades, or flamberge. It stood about 41 centimeters tall and was so hefty that two hands were required to handle it. Due to its distinctive ability to produce flames and vibrations when engaging in combat with an opponent, the nickname flame-bladed was born. The opponent would be attacked and harmed by the thin, long, and extremely sharp blades, which would also cause vibrations. Most of the swordsmen who wielded these weapons were skilled and knowledgeable. Wave blade swords of many sorts were produced at the time. One of the most well-known was the Flamernschwert, a two-handed sword with flame blades. Due to its widespread fatalities and ability to protect the swordsmen from their adversaries, this weapon was among the most powerful during the Renaissance. Number 5. Bagnak Bagnak, a well-known weapon with Indian origins, is sometimes referred to as Bagnak, which means tiger's claw. It has four to five bent blades and is formed like a claw. The blades are secured with a crossbar or a glove so that the fingers can grip them. The thumb and pinky finger are supported by two holes in the crossbar, while the remaining portion rests against the palm. The opponent's skin or muscles are intended to be cut by razor-sharp blades. Therefore,
war, the weapon that was put on the knuckles is extremely hazardous. According to legend, the claws were employed by the Radputs to assassinate people in their early years by removing the poison from a poison tiger. It was first used by the Emperor Shivaji to defeat Apsul Khan, a Mughal general and the ruler of Bijapur. Number 4. Kaltrop The Kaltrop has been used successfully for at least 2,000 years. Despite being a relatively unknown weapon even today, a Kaltrop is, in essence, a piece of iron that has been shaped into four points that are all the same length. A point faces straight up if it is dumped on the ground thanks to the way it is put together. Because of this invention, laying them didn't require any special skills, making them reasonably simple to quickly distribute over a large region. The oldest recorded usage of Kaltrop dates back to the Roman Empire, when Murex Ferris, or Jagged Things of Iron, was used to disrupt the horse-drawn chariots that were then in use by many different cultures throughout Europe. Number 3. Bill Hook The Marshall Bill Hook, often known as the English Bill, developed from the agricultural Bill Hook and was a relatively popular weapon in the late Middle Ages and the Renaissance. Many underpaid troops or drafted peasants chose it as their weapon of choice due to its adaptability and straightforward design. Its design changed considerably across Europe, but it was always a weapon with multiple uses. The little hook on the end might be used to snag the edges of the armor plate and draw opponents to the ground or off their mounts. Its broad, curving head could be used to slash similarly to a glaive. Later, bill hooks were also equipped with a long spike on top, so when required, they were used as spears or pikes. Number 2. Lantern Shield It was Italy, particularly Milan, that produced the best and most eccentrically designed armor. All of Europe's wealthiest and most fashion-conscious individuals had Italian smiths create their armor. The creation of one of the oddest and most complex shields in human history in Renaissance Italy should come as no surprise. Youth in the nation at the time had a significant dueling culture. After dusk, a lot of young males would venture out to cause mayhem on the streets or engage in scheduled fights, which led to the creation of the Lantern Shield. When dueling after dark, Lantern Shields were initially just shields with a hook or other secure place to fasten the lantern. The idea evolved over time though, and by the height of the Renaissance, the most sophisticated Lantern Shields had a variety of features, including spikes that protruded from the front of the shield and even sword blades that were forged into the shield, turning it into a weapon in and of itself. Number 1. Chakram Throwing knives features frequently in modern media and video games, but the Indian equivalent, a war disc, is otter. The chakram, also known as chakar, is a metal disc that has been sharpened. Although the earliest records of its use date back more than 2,000 years, it has been used by the nomadic Akali Nihang Sikhs for hundreds of years. Their sizes can range greatly, from a little larger than a palm to more than 0.6 meters wide. There are various ways to throw them, although underarm throws, which send the disc flying vertically are also well known. The most popular method is to spin the disc on the finger and rapidly release it. They can be thrown while moving, and with more force by using diagonal throws with high acceleration. They were used in battle by troops in the back ranks, who launched them into the air high enough to land on the skulls of their adversaries. The fighter might carry up to a dozen of these weapons on his arm at once while engaged in combat. The biggest ones, though, were worn around the neck. Alright guys, this wraps up our video for for today. If you found this video interesting please do well to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well. Bye for now.